Okay, uh, I am wired so that I can rewire all of you. Okay, so we, well, thank you. I'm gonna talk about rewiring for a site. Now, a quick word about the screens. You're seeing me. Um, you are also going to see a feed from what I am seeing, okay? Uh, and somebody may want to click on options and hit zoom in case we are seeing too much, okay? So, let's go on. Let's set a bit of the context for why I would want to see and you know how I would see. Biologically, this is the condition of my eyes. There is no shape perception. There is very little light. Uh, there is no way that I can tell from which direction a light is coming, okay? Technically, this is called, uh, and since I've had this from birth, it's called being congenitally blind. I don't know why scientists make up these nice fancy big words, but there you have it. Well, okay, so why bother with vision? Okay, I, you know, you can use sounds, bats use sounds, dolphin use sounds. Why do we need to even see? We need to see Primarily, it's about, a lot of it is about speed, and a lot of it is acquiring information you can't acquire in any other way. So for example, you're talking about how do you see, let's say, a fast-moving car, or how do you see waterfalls? You know, the cascade of water as the water falls and the droplets, how would you see those? Okay. Well, how do you get vision, okay? Well, you, you know, the, the standard answer to this is, um, and this is true, especially in the Indian context, get surgery, operation, eye operation, miracle, everything's fixed, yay. Okay, uh, but the eyes don't work. So some people got clever, they said, okay, we will uh, bypass the eyes. We'll stick electrodes in your brain. Like uh, we just saw in the TEDx video there, they were doing it on the hand, they do it on the brain. You have a headphone jack in your brain, which is wired to a computer and so on. Little bit tricky, very invasive procedure, and you're talking over $100,000 in terms of price. What, however, I use, again, we hack the brain, is called sensory substitution, where we, what the approach involves substituting, encoding information from one sense into another. In this case, I am encoding vision to sound. Okay? So what are the benefits of this approach? You know, it's eye condition agnostic. You don't, I don't care what your eyes can do. As long as you have a working brain, I can figure it out. Okay, sensory substitution can give you vision. Okay, of course, no surgery, so no one opens you up. I build my own eyes with off-the-shelf parts, and I can switch them off when I like. I don't like seeing something, I am tired, I want to go to sleep, no problem. It's not about blinking or closing my eyes, I flip a switch. My eyes are off, okay? So how does it work? It's not about sound, it's not about sonar. And I'm not saying your brains are made of plastic either. What I am saying is the brain is a task machine. It's an inference engine. I know we all step, slept through statistics class, but uh, unconsciously you've actually been doing statistics ever since you were an infant. So no excuses. What happens is you have neurons in the brain that are dedicated to certain functions. Now, if they are not used for something, they get allocated for something else. There is no waste in nature. Everything gets used. So what sensory substitution does is it provides the brain electrical, you know, everything is translated into electrical impulses, no matter what you sense. 
those impulses go into the brain and the brain says, hmm, wait a minute, I have specialized neurons to deal with this. So let me just flip them back to what they were supposed to be doing in the first place. And lo and behold, you have vision, because that's how you have visual cortex. And that's what I'm showing here on the picture. A lot of the visual areas in the brain are lighting up when we provide visual stimulus. It doesn't matter how you do it. So the software I am using is called The Voice. It's made by a Dutch physicist, Dr. Peter B. L. Meyer. The you know, letters in the middle, O, I, C, are capitalized. So if you use synthetic speech, it's called voice. And <clears throat> it's, you know, the, what happens is it's a generic application. It'll run on Windows. It'll run on the cloud. It'll run on Android, whatever else. And we use off-the-shelf hardware, OK? So how do we decode vision? Three fundamental rules. As I look around, you can see the scene change. I can also look up you know, at the ceiling, uh, all in the interest of science. Huh? And what happens is the placement of the object in the horizontal axis that's shown by stereo panning, which is why I'm wearing headphones. Okay. The pitch of the sound represents height. So the higher the pitch, the higher the object. The volume of the sound tells me about brightness. So the louder the sound, the brighter the object. Okay. Just these three mappings. Now, I'm a late entrant to vision. <clears throat> Most of you here, or probably all of you, have been learning this since you got out of the womb. Uh, what about me? I started learning this in the 2000s. The way I did it is asking a lot of questions, which is what uh, Raul also said in his presentation. You know, that the central core is critical thinking. Why is something the way it is? How do things look? Why is the ceiling, you know, what's this thing, these, these little spots of brightness here? Ask questions, and as Malaika said, tell your story, start asking. And that is how you learn to see. It's what a child also does. Though there is some element of self-learning there as well. And that also happens. Some of the discoveries uh, I made when I started learning, you know, earlier the way I would learn things is through sound or through my hands. But you know, things like you actually can see more if you go away from something. Now, how funny is that? If you, come, if you touch something with your hands, you actually learn what it is. But in sight, sometimes, you learn more about something if you step away. Darkness, tell me, how many of us say that we need light to see? Well, darkness is as important. Because that darkness could be telling you that you're approaching a nice big wall where there is absence of light, so you better watch out. OK? And the same for shadows. Shadows are important. Uh, maybe a lion is coming towards you, and you've got to see the shadows. Or maybe here, you know, you're looking at visual effects. And I come to that shortly. Contrast is king. Good contrast, get good vision. Yeah, that's what we have with all these lights here. Brightness, good contrast. Okay. So how do I do photography? Why did I do photography in the first place? I do it because it allows me to express what I see. So what happens is when I see a scene, I just snap. I don't think about it too much. I trust the technology. Hey, the manufacturer has built an autofocus. Great job. I'm not worried. I decide this is what I want to capture. I load. I aim the camera. I fire. Uh, I don't mind. You know, it doesn't matter what the consequences are, what I've captured. But that's the whole idea. Anyone tell me what this is? It's a geyser. Um, over 100 degrees Celsius. Yeah, some of the photographs I took here 
with this approach. How would you touch this Himalayan sky? Okay. Uh, down, anyone been to Thailand? Downtown Phuket. Well, thank you. 